Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be ranking eco-friendly trends that you might see on YouTube and Instagram. I am a biologist and I work in the field of environmental science and so I'm going to review some of the pros, the cons, and um, the environmental impacts of different trends and how effective some of these trends actually are in helping the environment. Disclaimer, I know I'm being annoying and I know everyone is trying the best that they can. I'm not judging people um, for not being the perfect eco-friendly person. I'm just wanting to dissect things a little bit and actually see, you know, when you see these like van lifers and zero wasters, like, is that actually making a difference? And I also know that corporations cause a huge percentage of our greenhouse gas emissions Then they push um, a lot of blame on the consumers, um, all the, the, those disclaimers associated with that. And I also know that a lot of people follow these trends, not really by choice, but by necessity. I'm talking in this video about people who choose to embark on these lifestyles. So with all those disclaimers, let's get started. Okay, so I have, I have a few tiers here. I have Mother Earth herself, which is A+. That's pretty neat which is pretty good, B. Um, you do you, that's like average, why not? Which is eh, and then nah, no, nah, we don't, that's, that doesn't really do a whole lot. So um, yeah, let's start with um, veganism. I think that's the first one I have there. So, so here's the thing with veganism. Um, there's so many misconceptions around it because there's so much propaganda, I guess, and um, money and influence and, political um, considerations going into our production of food, whether that's agriculture from animals or whether that is cropland. And it's really hard to piece apart what is true and what is not true. So when crops or um, animals are grazed on land, that is not super great habitat for animals or environmental integrity. Um, cropland especially is not great habitat for most species. And so when there is extra agricultural land, um, it's going to reduce the amount of land that wildlife can use as habitat and suitable habitat. Um, other issues with agriculture is eutrophication, which is the runoff of nutrients from far farmland um, into waterways, oceans, which causes um, an excess blooms of algae, which uh, eats up a lot of the oxygen in the water and can kill aquatic life. That's another issue with it. Um, widespread pollution, um, especially in non-organic farms or um, slaughterhouses, there's a large amount of pollution associated with that. Editing me, I didn't even mention um, water usage, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, specifically from cattle. There's so, there so many things to go into when it comes to agriculture. So there was a comprehensive study done uh, by the University of Oxford and it was published in Science and it found that cutting meat and dairy products can reduce your carbon footprint from food up to 73% and that if everyone stopped eating meat and dairy products, global farm land use could be reduced by 75%. Agriculture is also what feeds us. So it's what can feed us the best and the most efficiently, which is the best way to think about it when it comes to climate change and environmental um, land management. So veganism can be a good way to um, more efficiently produce food for people. Um, it's not perfect for everyone, of course. There, there are also so many environmental issues associated with certain vegan foods. You can really go down the list. You can look at the Central Valley of California and look at the issues with water and water management and of fruits and nuts and growing those sorts of produce. Um, those are also huge considerations to talk about exactly which crops you are eating. And I think that you could even be refining more and more from veganism to only buy certain crops that are the most environmentally friendly. There can be really ecologically friendly ways of eating vegan and some that are less less beneficial. Oh, what should I rank? What should I rank this as? I think that um, this one is going to get, just because the amount of studies that I've seen saying that like, so much of our issues can be solved with the world going vegan. I'm gonna rank this in Mother Earth herself. Okay, next one is van life. This is what I have. I have a, I have a guy sitting in his van as the little icon. So van life is interesting. 
because it's going to tie in really well when we talk about um, uh, tiny houses because it can be a version of tiny houses, but it's a version that uses fossil fuels to get around. So if you do van life one way, it's going to differ very much from how you do it another way. So some of the downsides of van life is, um, of course, if you're traveling a lot, you are consuming a lot of fossil fuels associated with moving your house around. And a lot of vans can be not so energy efficient um, with gas. Also, um, many people don't follow Leave No Trace. Leave No Trace is um, basically just pack your crap up when you're gone and leaving your site. There can be so many campgrounds and um, you know places where vans congregate, where it's just filled with trash and people are just not respecting the planet. Those are not eco-friendly ways to do van life. But some of the plus sides is, yeah, you're using more fossil fuels, but you also don't have a house, like a traditional house that you're heating. Um, you're using less water most of the time. You're definitely using less energy. You can kit out your van with solar panels, so you're pretty off the grid. And also, um, you know, you're buying less stuff because you don't have much room in your van. You're consuming less in general. And so there can be a lot of like topple over effects, but um, if we're just looking at van life itself, um, there can be some good sides and some bad sides. That said, um, a tiny home that doesn't move and you aren't using those fossil fuels to travel and to fill your van up with gas, it's gonna be a little bit more energy efficient and a little bit lower ecological footprint. So I'm going to put van life as why not? You know, it's not, it's not the top, but you can do it right, so why not? Next one we're gonna do is dumpster diving. So approximately one third that the food we produce goes to waste. Food waste is a huge issue. Annually, we waste about 1.3 billion tons of food. So when you're dumpster diving, you're taking food, one, you're diverting it away from the landfill and you're lowering your reliance on what I was talking about with the veganism topic, all of the problems with agriculture because you are buying what was our, you're not even buying, you're taking from the dumpster what was already just gonna go to the landfill. So um, there's actually not too many downsides from an ecological perspective that I could think of for dumpster diving. I, I wouldn't say it's like the top lifestyle change up here. It's, it's a nice one, but um, I'll probably put it, I'll probably put it at you do you. I think that's good. It could be a nice thing to incorporate, but there are a few more um, lifestyle changes and eco trends that are just a little bit um, better at reducing your ecological footprint, but dumpster diving is a good one. Okay, the next one I have is off-grid living. And I'm also throwing homesteading in a bit with this. And this one is also another one that it hugely depends how you do it. So if you are off the grid and you're relying entirely on diesel generators and you're getting all your food shipped into you because you can't, you're in maybe a climate where you can't grow um, or you don't know how to grow food. Yeah, that's not gonna be super environmentally friendly. And you know, my disclaimer at the beginning was I'm not talking about communities that have no other option but to do this like in the north. I'm talking about people who willingly go out, leave the city or their hometowns to go do this. There can be a big ecological footprint for people who um, do homesteading and off-grid living if they are overly reliant on fossil fuel technology and they're shipping in a lot of their resources. Another thing too is if waste is not properly disposed of, it could be a pollution hazard um, to local waterways or anywhere where there's runoff if you are not properly disposing of your waste. But on the flip side, you can make a huge argument if you are someone who grows all your own food and you know you are relying on rainwater collection, um, local water sources, and um, living like with solar panels and all that. So it can be done really, really well. And actually when done right, this one is going to be an absolute huge um, positive impact. So I actually am going to put um, this when done right as Mother Earth herself. So the next one is minimalism. So I got I got the people from the minimalist as my little icon in here. So minimalism is basically using and buying less things and reducing your reliance on things. And so this one's an interesting one because it brings with it a lot of 
these other like trends and subcultures like pulled into it because if you are buying less stuff you're probably more likely to thrift or you may be likely to downsize and then pick up a tiny home so it's like a really all-encompassing one so it's really interesting to look at from an ecological perspective so it's also hard to talk about consumers and global footprint and piece apart what is actually um the fault i guess of a corporation or what is like the fault of the buyer um but in a 2016 study published to the journal of industrial ecology consumers are responsible for up to 60 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions if you piece it apart from what is being purchased from corporations and used by the consumer richer countries have more impacts so the United States has the largest greenhouse gas emissions per capita, followed by Luxembourg and Australia. And a lot of this, you know, we can argue if it's 60%, 70%, 40%, but there's a huge impact from consumer goods and the purchase of consumer goods. So by purchasing less things, it reduces your environmental footprint because so much of greenhouse gas emissions are tied to making things. A lot of people choose this lifestyle for better uh, mental health, which is fine. So there's a lot of other benefits that aren't necessarily environmentalism, but overall this can be a pretty big one. Where you can go wrong with minimalism is uh, throwing away a lot of your stuff irresponsibly. So more stuff's going to the landfill or like repurchasing a bunch of stuff you already have to get like the a minimalist aesthetic. Those are like where there could be some downsides, but overall it's a pretty good trend. I think I'm gonna put it as uh, that's pretty neat because it's not focused entirely on environmentalism, but it has like that as a side benefit. Okay, next one is thrifting. So America has an issue with fast fashion. The world has an issue with fast fashion, but America throws away 10.5 million tons of clothing annually. So back in the day, clothing used to be this big, uh, you know, investments and you would mend it and you would hold on to those items for a way longer amount of time. But now we have fast fashion. It changes by the day, by the trend. And so thrifting can be a way to break out of that fast, fat, fast fashion cycle and reliance on fast fashion. Fast fashion is not only environmentally harmful, but it's also associated with a lot of different human rights abuses. So it can be quite problematic overall. So um, eliminating fast fashion instead, going for an affordable thrifting option can be a good option for a lot of people who want to reduce their fast fashion use. It keeps plastic out of the landfills, it keeps waste out of the landfills, and um, it can also be really affordable. A lot of times thrift stores are sometimes cheaper than fast fashion places and the clothes that you get actually will last longer. There are some issues with thrifting. They don't necessarily come in an environmental context. I know there has been some arguments about when you donate clothes to a thrift store, it doesn't necessarily get reused. It could also just be recycled or trashed by whatever thrift store you're donating to. But as far as purchasing, I, there are some issues around the community's access, like marginalized communities access to um, affordable and fashionable clothing. And so when there's more people thrifting, it can take away access to the best stuff in the thrift store. So there's some stuff associated, negative downsides from a you know societal perspective, but it's a pretty good option for people. So I'm gonna do it as like, oh, I'm, I'm split between you do you or a why not. Um, do you do you it's kind of similar to dumpster diving it's diverting waste from the landfill tiny house movement so the tiny house movement is basically living in a smaller house so that could be defined as around 400 square feet or smaller and usually it's non-stationary so it's different than the van life option so newly constructed homes in the united states have on average been around 2600 to 2700 square feet which is massive and when it comes to building a bigger home that contributes to more urban sprawl that contributes to um you know wildlife habitat fragmentation and complete loss of wildlife habitat when you're putting a house and a new suburb in what was previously a pristine area so there's actually a phd student who did her thesis on tiny houses her name's maria saxton and she studied whether or not Tiny houses were better for the environment in her thesis, the ecological footprints of tiny house downsizers. She, so she surveyed 80 tiny home dwellers and found that the ecological footprint was reduced on average around 45%. She also found that there was a lot of crossover from tiny house to other eco trends. And so when people first started with a tiny house, they also embraced minimalism, often veganism, growing their own food and all of that. So there was a big crossover effect with just living in a tiny home. So she 
calculated that 366 million acres of biologically productive land could be saved if just 10% of Americans lived in tiny homes. Um, however, the downsides were some habits got worse. So eating out um, got worse and sometimes traveling more. And those also have higher greenhouse gas emissions associated with them. So um, there could be some downsides there. But overall, this one actually is like a huge reduction. So I'm going to say Mother Earth herself. Should we or should we do that's pretty neat? Mm. Let's do that's pretty neat because you don't um, No, Yeah, no, I'm, I'm feeling that's pretty neat. Yeah. The last one I have is zero waste. So this one is a super trendy one on Instagram and there's a lot of zero wasters, but it's also not that realistic for a lot of people. Um, low waste, I think is more, more achievable, but uh, it focuses on diverting waste from the landfill and trying to reduce your purchasing of things that are gonna cause you waste. It's a huge commitment and um, some the problematic part I can sometimes see is especially if you start getting involved with the Instagram subculture of zero waste is uh, it's really for some people about the aesthetics of having like the glass mason jars and then they go out and they buy glass mason jars when they could have taken like their spaghetti jars and cleaned it out and used that or you know there's a lot of people who like trash things that they have now to like buy like cool aesthetic versions of it and i find that can be a like, quite problematic of course not everyone does that but that's just something to kind of point out so there is a little bit of that downside if you do um take zero waste to that sort of extreme um, but overall, this is a huge, um, important movement. Yeah, it requires a huge lifestyle change, but um, I'm gonna throw it in as uh, that's pretty neat. So I actually didn't end up anything with nah, because these are all like people trying. So I don't wanna like completely be like, don't even try. Um, there's nothing that's too problematic in here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my ranking of zero waste and environmental subcultures. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.